Welcome back to the charismatic voice. I love the lyrics behind today's video. They are so empowering and I'm excited to hear the voice that wrote and performed them for the very first time. Shout out of thanks to our patrons who orchestrated an epic February vote to make this all possible. Let's get to it. <laughs> okay, you sound cool already, but I have to go back to a few things. First of all, I always get super excited when I see so many instruments on stage. I just love it when our full sonic spectrum is filled with tons of different sounds and textures, which it feels immediate like this is gonna be. And then, oh my gosh, the little tiny dinky keyboard. Where, where was it? <laughs> This, this gets me. There's like a teensy keyboard beneath a couple of other keyboards. So what's that jacket? Whoa. Okay, back to the beginning. I also love the insistent beat that's happening. Very insistent, that's the best way I can describe it. There are cool sounds in there already. Oh my gosh, he's got a really good immediate timbre. Like you can even tell that from the first two notes. But the thing that I'm loving most at this moment is the way his body is so grounded when he goes up for higher belted notes. He doesn't seem to move the stuff at all, which tells me he's got really, really good support. Let's go, go back. We have like I can see that there's an adjustment of placement, a little bit of change probably in, in needing to support a little bit more air pressure that's in here, but his underneath sort of like where those, uh, the feet are paddling underneath the surface of the water, that kind of idea, his support system is just still and grounded. The chance to turn the that's great. It's a very contagious in the sound too. And I love the pitch specificity. a very beefy sound that's going up really high and that tends to take a lot of effort. However, because of the support system remaining, remaining very grounded, I don't think that effort is being offloaded onto his vocal folds, which will usually elongate a person's career. It just, it sounds so continuous. The little bit of 
sort of like overdrive that we're hearing in the voice, that doesn't sound like it's something that's on the true folds. It definitely sounds to me like it's something that's made elsewhere in the vocal tract, which is also a really good sign. I also love the way he added that essentially as I felt emotional heightening. So he's using it in a way that taps into our emotions, which I think is super awesome and smart and driven by message, which is really great. And speaking of the message, the lyrics, they're amazing. I love this idea. You're the voice. Try and understand it. Make a noise and make it clear. We're not going to sit in silence. We're not going to live with fear. I just, I love the empowerment of telling somebody to essentially have some introspection, find out what they believe, and then speak it. That's amazing. I I believe in the healing power of music. I believe in community, and I speak it here on YouTube all the time. I really, truly believe in that. I believe in falling more in love with music every day. And because I know that, I feel like such an empowered individual in life. I feel like it's something that I am just eager to shout from the mountaintops and share. And I love the way that these lyrics encourage that kind of introspection to know what you believe in and shout it from the mountaintops. That's so amazing. In addition, they have like a little hooky, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa thing in it. So you feel like, yeah, I can sing along with this. And I love the lyrics. That's so cool. Okay, back, 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 back. I love the way he bridged these two phrases. Oh, whoa, look at each other. No breath between. It's like it has this emotional surge that then leads into the lyrics. That's cool. So catchy. I, that like oh whoa 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 part is so catchy, right? You you want to be singing along with that in the audience. I I love the mouth shapes and the like little bit of mic technique we saw in that moment. He's really great at having very defined vowels with his mouth shapes, especially the oohs and o's. You see essentially when it's more closed or more open in the mouth. And I also love the way he gazes out the audience here. It looks very purposeful. It looks very inviting at the same time. Like you really want to listen to what he's got to say. We all can stand and look at the, like, just look at how much he's opening his mouth. Uh, that, the, in this style, that's considered super good, right? More closed mouth and grunge for some things would be more appropriate. Also, I love in that part right there, there's a moment where he has like a little surge and it plays with the pitch a little bit. It's not perfectly in tune at that moment because it's very expressive and messing with the tuning. That tells me that earlier when we had this amazing, like incredibly specific pitch, this was like a nail gun. It was right on pitch every single time that had no auto tuning happening on this. Uh, this is also, I think a slightly older recording. I think it's from the eighties not positive about that. Uh, but I know this was written in the 80s, so it might be 90s actually this was recorded in. But I think it's important to assess, you know, is this person actually doing this live or not? And I think he's actually doing it live without any extra things in that production chain. <laughs> Right there, all oh, right. It's just a little bit. I 
I love, so there's a lot of jumps that are happening in there. And again, he's so specific about the pitch and has a really strong, it's a rather hefty sound in each of those spots. <laughs> There's that moment again where he comes in with like an ooh or some sort of vowel or sound that's not necessarily a lyric and then lets that essentially be an emotional surge that goes into lyrics. I wonder if this is just part of his signature overall to do that. I like it. He has this sort of effortless power in his voice. And it doesn't mean I think it's totally effortless to do what he's, what he's doing. I think that means that, again, that effort isn't being slammed into his larynx to create these sounds. I think he's able to really find that lower support. The way he went up there right before the chorus started and had a belt that was higher, it just was almost tossed off like it was nothing to him. Here. Oh, that's a long note. Right there. Wow. Oh my gosh, her outfit's oh, it's like a studded corset question mark. And crimped hair. <laughs> awesome. Wow, wow. This is amazing. Thank you so much, patrons. I know I've been nerding out recently about getting some cool instruments involved in rock or metal. And I I gotta say, I didn't see the bagpipes coming. <laughs> they just kind of popped out there. I was like, oh my gosh, there are bagpipes in this song. It feels, actually it feels kind of nationalistic, which makes sense because I believe that the song, actually that might've occurred first. So I'm not sure about timeline here, but I believe that this song, became sort of a, an unofficial national anthem at one point, maybe still is, and bagpipes would be somehow feel sort of nationalistic, like we're hearkening back to some good old days in some way. Also, they're such a cool instrument. I love the way that you can just keep playing and keep producing sound and keep it going because of that bag of air. It's just, it's really, really cool the sustain that they have and how loud they're able to get. Whoa. <laughs> If y'all know me very well, you also know that I am married to a Scotsman. So uh, I fully, fully support people wearing kilts, by the way. I think that that is a, a fashion trend that should be done much, much more often. And someday he's going to, well, hopefully later this year, he's going to get some more content up on cooking and kilts, which is all about awesome, awesome cooking that he makes that helps sustain this channel <laughs> and me. <laughs> for kilts!
Okay, this is something I'm guessing most people wouldn't ever think about. But a lot of times singers will get tension in their neck or in their jaw, which will cause them to sing any particular direction, sort of feel like they're locked into it. He, at one point, was singing this all straightforward, and now he's singing it all to the side, and he's totally fine with it. There's not a change in the sound quality. So that tells me that this is, he's gotten neck and jaw tension out of the way of his singing, which is really, really important. <laughs> I just love the backpipes and kilts. <laughs> Look at that mouth. <laughs> That's so cool. Like the, the sort of long extended the, the a slide towards the end. <laughs> I love that. That's fine. That was a great fill. Lots of energy. Yeah. Ooh. And we also have some strings of the orchestra in the back that are building up that energy. Yeah. Whoa, what just flew? Ah, uh, the mic stand just flew. Uh, yeah, I, I should mention, please be careful with your mic stand. Mic, things have happened with mic stands to people in the audience, so be careful, uh, y'all. If, if a mic stand comes at you, try to catch it safely. Um, try to throw it safely if you're the singer. Yeah. I love that extra distortion as it goes up. Mm, I love this rhythm in here with not. They're going to the closure of the T really quickly, which gives it a certain, it demands the attention, but the stop makes you feel like it's not just a, it feels like somebody's taking a stand for something. It feels definitive. It's like I have an exclamation at not. So if I was to take this a little differently, if I were to say it like more lyrically, I would say we're not going to sit in silence and said we've got we're not going to sit in silence. And it brings this extra rhythm that is commanding. That's what I was looking for. Command. Man, that ba bum ba bum There's something that feels so much like a heartbeat in that. That might be why I loved the energy that that introduced at the very beginning of the song. And they've kept that beat going on underneath. That's like a heartbeat of excitement of a person that's about to stand up for something they believe in. Hey! The mic stand didn't fly in the audience. It just flew across the stage. Whew. Okay, everyone's okay. Your turn. You're the voice track. Come on now. Big one! Nice! We're not gonna sit in silence. I like the harmony. That's a great harmony. Yay, backup singers. I love this kind of involvement from a crowd. You're there as a performer to, to communicate a message to your crowd, to your audience. You're there to uplift them or to take them through an emotional journey to help them find more joy or just a livelier part of life. So 
it's so important when you have this involvement, I think that there are moments when it's great to just let the crowd sing also can be helpful for saving your voice, but I don't think that's what he's doing here. I think he's just letting the crowd take it over and feel like they own the lyrics to this song. Again, incredibly uplifting, incredibly empowering. I love that upper harmony. Backup singers are killing it. Sticky. I love in that line the way he was so clear with his diction and also really clear with the pitch placement of all of the consonants that were voiced. When I say voice constant, I mean a consonant that has some sort of pitch happening underneath. So your vocal folds are going wacka, wacka, wacka to create a pitch. And consonants come in pitched and unpitched pairs or voiced and unvoiced pairs. So a D and a T or a pair, D has the sound of a pitch underneath it from the vocal folds going. T, a T doesn't have a pitch. The, the, the. the same articulation point though. And so in this phrase, he runs through it and all of his pitches from the pitched consonants are really, really clear. Right. And that actually takes quite a bit of focus. It takes a lot of energy to get all of those consonants exactly in the same place because as you're closing your mouth, it's reflecting breath pressure back the other direction. And that can cause a little bit of disturbance in the pitch unless you've trained it really, really well. Yeah, brass. And oh, oh, it's done. Ah, it was good. Whoa, that cut caught me off guard. I love the way that this song is so sticky. That chorus is going through my head. It's going to continue to just circle over and over. I feel like you could sing it with a crowd for 10 minutes and it still wouldn't be boring because it just... It's catchy, it's sticky, it sticks in your head. I love that there's a really easy thing without lyrics to sing in the middle of the chorus and then packed on both sides are these incredible, empowering lyrics. And then I really love the way that John Farnham delivers that with so much power. There's pizzazz in there. There's a lot of precision as well. And I love the way that he brings more emotion in as he starts to give a teeny bit more more grit to the sound. He's just got a really fantastic voice and a fantastic way of delivering and involving his crowd. So thank you so much, patrons. This was an awesome recommendation. If y'all would like to see some more patron recommendations, you can check out this playlist over here and may you fall more in love with music every day.